Theses about the near future. In the winter there will more than likely not be a freeze in action on the front. The AFU will try to realize its significant advantage in winter provision. An offensive from the territory of Belarus is still a real threat. The Ukrainian leadership is well aware of this and is taking all necessary measures. Supplies from partners will only increase. The US is preparing to transfer tanks for the first time, and in the number of several tank battalions. Next year, I am sure, we can expect interesting offers and news on aviation for Ukraine. The transfer of aviation is not a yes or no question, it is just a matter of time. Mobilization in Russia will continue. Putin's government plans to mobilize several hundred thousand more people. The initiative is still in the hands of the Ukrainian general staff, and I am sure that all measures will be taken to retain it. Russia is limited in modern armaments. The appearance of D1 howitzers of 1943 at their front is not an exception, it is a trend that will grow. This applies to all kinds of weapons, in addition to their aviation. However, now they use aviation as ineptly as possible due to the low training of ground personnel, mediocre high command and the constant strengthening of the Ukrainian air defense. They will continue to launch missiles at civilians and Ukrainian civilian infrastructure. Whoever comes to power in the US will have no effect on supplies and military aid to Ukraine. These are not at all related processes. Official cooperation between Israel and Ukraine on intelligence and defense issues has already begun and will only grow. The way both countries vote at the United Nations has nothing to do with real business. It is important for Ukrainians not to forget that no one owes them anything and that each state acts solely on the basis of its national interests. This works the other way around, Ukraine also owes no one anything. It is important not to forget this against the backdrop of growing Western aid. They help not out of the goodness of their hearts, but because there is an interest in the victory of Ukraine and a request to weaken Russia as much as possible. The resilience and courage of the Ukrainian people also played a crucial role. A conflict with the use of nuclear weapons is still unlikely. A return of Ukraine to the borders of 91 is a matter of time. This does not mean that the war will not be even more difficult or longer. Its intensity may change, but as long as Russia exists, there will be war. This generation of Russians has nurtured imperial ambitions and they must go the way of the Germans after their defeat in World War II. And now in more detail on the latest massive missile attack. Preliminary, 100 cruise missiles X-101 and Caliber were launched. The last strike on Ukraine was October 31st, before that, October 10th. That is, it takes the occupiers on average two weeks to restore the potential of missile strikes against Ukraine. Also, understanding what a real resource Russia has for the production of missiles, it can be said that today, has got very deep into its reserves. Why? because it needs negotiations now more than ever. The Kharkov region has been liberated. Right bank, Kherson, region is liberated. The rest of the territories are being liberated. Russia needs negotiations at all costs. This is the convulsion of the loser who started this war. Yes, it may last a long time, but victory, freedom, independence, they are worth a trillion times more than situational comfort. Although, the Ukrainians already know this very well and negotiations will be held only after the liberation of the entire territory of Ukraine on their own terms.